Punch it. Good evening, Dodger fans. Could the Dodgers potentially win the AL West for the third, fourth year in a row without Zach Greinke? We'll ponder those questions and more on Dodgers Wrap 360, brought to you by AfterBuzz TV. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, AfterBuzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Josh. <laughs> Bringing it back old school with a little Eric Gagne entry music. It, the Gagne years were exciting. <laughs> they were. <laughs> Maybe, you know, we, we've had some exciting in the past few years, but the Dodgers just can't get over that hump. They cannot. Mm, they know? can't seem to figure it out. And <laughs> and as a as a season ticket holder for 22 years. 22 years six t- season ticket hold. Joshua Gershon sitting this one tonight. <laughs> that, I'm Mike Conley. Dodgers are back in town. Uh, I cut you off. Oh, no. That, that game five against the Mets, we had numerous chances to blow that game open. Numerous. Yes. And could not deliver. Just, oh, that was that was one of the most frustrating games that I remember being at. What What is the beauty of March? <laughs> what is the beauty of March, Josh? It brings hope. Brings hope. hope. Everybody's in contender again. Yes. We got to put last October behind us, and we got to talk about this 2016. Let's first start with off-season additions. First, the head man of the job. Dave Roberts. Uh, well, it comes as no surprise to anyone who knows me that I was not a Mattingly fan. Mm. Uh, I mean, I know it came out that a lot that the upper management was making a lot of decisions for him, right? which it came out later. But, uh, you know, like last year when Jock Peterson started struggling, they never moved him down in the lineup. They kept him in the leadoff spot, and he was, I mean, he was really bad for that stretch after the All-Star break. Then they didn't do anything to help him. Yeah. You know, I questioned so many of the pitching decisions. Uh, I always firmly believe a couple times in the playoffs, he let Kershaw hang out to dry. Yes. Uh, Which... I mean, I hate the Giants, but Bruce Bochy is probably the best manager in baseball. Would never do that to one of his pitchers. Yeah. The, the, the thing I usually <laughs> always hear with Bruce Bochy is, and you hear this about the best managers, is like their teams are greater than the sum of their parts, you know? And you hear that about Bruce Bochy all the time. You never really heard that about Don Mattingly. You never really got that feel that his team, like, overperformed. No. <laughs> you know? You'll hear about it about a Buck Showalter or a Bruce Bochy, but not so much Don Mattingly. I think you could hear about it about Dave Roberts, though. I think so, too. I mean, apparently he blew them away in the interview because everyone thought it was going to be, um, uh, what's his name, the uh, strength, and, uh, strength and conditioning guy. Um, I, his name's escaping my mind right now. Yeah, it'll come back. <laughs> but, but, it's uh, a long show. But apparently, uh, you know, uh, much like with Mike Tomlin and the Steelers, Roberts just came out of left field and blew him away. Yeah. So, you know, former Red Sox, former Dodger, former UCLA Bruin. This is why I'm excited about him. <laughs> I mean, he's, and, and, like, I think that he'll be good for, like, the younger players. I think he's going to be great for Puig because, I mean, you know, you can – you can remember when he played. I mean, Puig can, like, remember, you know, the stolen base hurt around the world back in 04. Oh, you know? yeah. So, and he can remember, okay, this is, this is a guy I remember seeing him actually play. This guy can play. I'm going to listen to this guy. Whereas Mattingly, probably 10 years away from, like, having that type of connection with Puig. And, and Mattingly being a little more old school. Yeah. You know, you got the, he was a little bit old school. I mean, I don't, I don't mind that. You know, and Mattingly was a great player. I just for some reason, yeah, I felt there was a there was a lot of disconnect with him and some of the players. You could you could tell, especially when um, Ethier and him got into that uh, blowout in the dugout last year in the playoffs. Mm. You know, there there was something obviously that some kind of disconnect there between the him and some of the players. I think I think guys like Granky and Kershaw liked him, mm-hmm. but obviously some you could tell that yeah, Puig probably. You know some of these other guys, yeah. not not his biggest fan. <laughs> yeah, it seems like um, you know he does come from that old school era. You know, and and Roberts is probably more along the lines of being a little bit more nurturing to the younger players and kind of reaching out. From all indications, what I've heard so, so far in the spring of like really trying to foster a relationship with those guys and you know really getting them to 
form a relationship where he's not only caring about what they do on the baseball field, but caring about them as a person, and therefore, you know, going to maybe draw a lot out of them, you know? Because Puig, he, he got a lot of flack last year, but his, like, ceiling is so high, you can't give up on the kid. And, you know, those Cuban guys, I mean, they, there's going to be a transition, you know? Oh, yeah. It's a huge culture shock for these guys. It's not going to go away after one year, maybe not even two, but we're hoping three. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, uh, that's that's why you can't trade Puig. One, his contract is so team-friendly. Mm-hmm. And two, the, yeah, the potential is there. We've seen it. I mean, when they were talking about Bo Jackson, who was one of my favorite players growing up, you know, and you can see the speed, the size, the power, and it's just, you just want him to pull it together so bad. That is a pretty good comparison. I mean, the, the attitude I don't mind, I mean, look, Bryce Harper's really good. Is he, You know, he's not the best attitude. Uh, but That's a clown <laughs> remark, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're hoping that he can get the best out of Puig because, obviously, you know, that guy's the sky's the limit with this guy. Now, I think, like, the three of their biggest problems last year were, you know, starting staff behind the two-headed beast, which is now a one-headed beast. Yes. And so did they cor- correct that in the off season? Well, you can't replace Zach Greinke. Right. I mean, the season he had last year, I mean, you had the two best pitchers, arguably, in baseball on the same team. You know, at least top two of the top five best pitchers in baseball on the same team. Right. Like, that's why I know they won 92 games last year. I got to imagine, even if, you know, Kenta Maeda works out and Kazmir doesn't regress, which you have to hope he doesn't. Right. I still think you're looking at at least five to seven less wins, especially with Ryu not coming back till, what, July, maybe June, July, when Ryu comes back. I got to imagine that this team taps out about 85 to 87 wins is okay. my guess. Okay. Fangrass had him actually projected to win one more game than they did last year. Had him <sighs> 93 games. I just don't I, know, see that. I can't see that either. I I, I mean, I, I, I might have looked pretty good in the spring. Yeah. I, I Casimir bothers me. <laughs> so Casimir sl- slots in at two, right? Yeah. And so Maeda will be three? That's my guess. And then four, you're going to have... Um, like Alex Wood? Yeah. And, I mean, Wood has looked good. At times? At times, but... He's just He was pretty inconsistent last year. I mean, yeah. I, I want to, uh, you know, give him the benefit of the doubt where, okay, he's got a full spring training with the club, you know, because anybody coming over halfway through the year, it's, you know, you got to, you know, get your family squared away and all that garbage. And it's kind of tough to, to, to make that transition. But now this year, you know, you expect him to... I don't know. Maybe come in, but is he having that good a good a spring? No, he did not have a great spring. No. And you know, right now they were slating Bullsinger as the fifth starter, but he's going to start on the DL. So now you're looking at. I, I mean, I don't even know what they're going to do. I don't think they've said yet who their fifth starter is going to be. You have Brett Anderson is out. Yep. McCarthy's out. Bullsinger's out. Ryu is out. I mean, with Ryu back, they have a solid starting five. With him back. Right. Um, and I like Bolsinger at times, and you know Anderson overachieved. How long is Anderson out till? Uh, you know, I I want to say he's out till June. Yeah, yeah. He, you know, he he was pretty good for him last year, but I was shocked in the off season when they extended him the qualifying offer of fifteen point eight. I mean, that's like snatch, and I can't believe what's his name didn't snatch that up. Howie Kendrick. Oh, yeah. What did he think? I mean, he was, like, out for a month last year. It's not like he had a pretty good year, but what does he think he's going to get? Is he one year, $15.8 million? He's going to say no to that? And then, like, because I thought, okay, what are you going to get? You're 32 years old. Someone's going to maybe give you three years at, like, what, 10 per, 12 per? Uh, I mean, he wasn't even going to get I don't think he was even going to get the Daniel Murphy deal. Yeah, well, no. I don't even think he was going to get that. No, what, what did he end up getting? Like yeah. three thirty-seven, three for thirty-seven, I think. Oh, really? Something like okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he probably wasn't, and the, like, so he should have taken it because like he ended up waiting, and then because they would have had because they tendered him, they would have had to give up the draft pick. So that's yeah. kind of hurting a lot of guys in that like collective bargaining agreement. So, so he ended up getting like two years of twenty, right, from from the Dodgers. Something like that. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, what's better, fifteen point eight for one or two for twenty? It's like, especially when you missed a month with like a hamstring or something last year. It's like, come in, prove your wealth, 
take 15.8 million and then be a free agent next year maybe f- play a full season this year that was that was kind of shocking to me that he didn't take it well he's not even going to play a full season this year he's going to start on the dl yeah, so. yeah, right? <laughs> and and i thought like uh it's it's too bad that he's on the dl because i thought he might be a leading candidate to maybe be a leadoff guy for these guys because it seems like they're really searching for somebody to be a leadoff guy <laughs> yeah you can tell they're desperately searching actually that's that, I, I kind of feel like whoever's going to play second base is probably going to lead off, whether it be Kiki Hernandez, Chase Utley at times, right. or when Kendrick comes back. I feel like whoever that is will actually be the leadoff person. Oof. You don't think they'll give Crawford a shot? Uh, he's, he's, he's still kind of fast. It's just his on-base percentage is mediocre. And, and he looks he looks really bad at times swinging the bat. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I loved him so much when he was on Tampa Bay. Right. You know, Back I, when he was good. Yeah, he was so good. <laughs> and, you know, he started off okay for the Red Sox, and then he just kept getting hurt. Yeah. But now he doesn't – he doesn't. He takes undisciplined swings at the plate. He just he just doesn't look good. He swings wild. He, I mean, people complain about Puig swinging wild. Crawford's just his back. Yeah. I don't uh, – yeah, his 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 on base percentage was like barely over three hundred last year. Yeah, he he was uh, it was it was rough to watch him too. So, I mean, we the Dodgers made that trade basically for Adrian Gonzalez. Everything else was yeah. If you want him, you're taking Beckett and and, and Crawford with you. I've I've actually never been able to thank a twenty two year Dodger season ticket holder <laughs> for that trade personally. Here you go. Here's a quarter billion dollars of stuff we don't want yeah <laughs> and well adrian gonzalez you can have him too although you know i his 17 million we do like the, but oh, in the spring watching him some about him bothered me in the spring he was swinging late a lot oh boy which is not which is when he at the end of the season because he usually plays all year right <clears throat> you know knock on wood does not get hurt you know only takes days off when the manager gives him the day off right and normally you can tell at the end of the year when he wears down, that's what tends to happen. He tends to be late on a lot of balls. Oof. And already in the spring, I was watching those two Angel games, and he was swinging late a lot. And I don't know if it was just still spring training, still trying to come into his swing, right. but Gonzalez is someone who normally starts off on fire. Right. He always is on fire in the beginning of the year. He's the guy you can kind of consistently depend upon to not have huge dips. You yeah, know? exactly. He's, he's always there, you know, and at the end of the year, you can count on it to be 290 with 25 bombs and a bunch of ribbies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, if that that could spell problems for that lineup. If, yeah, because if, uh, if Puig can't hit... And Gonzalez can't hit. That lineup's a real... It doesn't matter how good Corey Seager's could have been. And Kendrick's out. Yeah, Kendrick's out. Who else in the lineup is hurt right now? You got... Uh, well, aside from all the starting pitching, you got yeah. Ethier out. Who Ethier actually had a solid season last year. Yes, and, and it was so funny because this time last year, they were trying to peddle him. Oh, yeah, they, were, couldn't, they couldn't even give him away last year. Yeah, <laughs> and they were lucky because yeah. he, like, started the season yeah. as the most consistent guy in that outfield. <laughs> he was, and I've always liked Ethier. Um, it's, you know, with him being out, that hurts bad. Because uh, now you're filling that slot with. I mean, I figure they'll platoon. I'm actually hoping. Vance Lake. Yeah, Vance Lake and Crawford. I'm hoping they let Trace Thompson, if he makes the team, which I think he will with Ethier out. Right. I hope that you let him play a little bit and see what he's got. I mean, he's 25, 26. Yeah. He played okay for the White Sox last, White Sox last yeah, year. Yeah, in the t- in the in the the little bit I saw yeah. him when they played the Red Sox, he looked pretty good. I mean, so athletic from an athletic family. His brother, as Dodgers fans probably know, is Clay Thompson mm-hmm. of the Golden State Warriors. His dad, former <coughs> Laker uh, Michael Thompson. Uh, but yeah, I mean, given he's got a huge stride. Yeah. I mean, he's not he's a above average outfielder defensively. So it's like. Give him a shot. Yeah, and he's, aside from Peterson, he is their only true center fielder on that team. They don't have another... I mean, Hernandez can play a lot of positions. I don't think he's particularly good defensively at any of them. He can't play them, and he's okay. I don't think he's particularly great at any position. He's not, but he can hit. Because last year in the playoffs against the Mets, there was a ball, I think Cespedes hit it, that me and my friends, my father, we all looked and said, Peterson would have got to that ball. And that would have ended the inning. Right. But he couldn't. And it was wound up being like a triple or a double. I can't remember. But oh. it was one of those plays where you're like, oh, if Peterson was in that line, if Peterson was there, he would easily have gotten that ball. Like, mm. almost easily. And Hernandez, you know, Hernandez got a bad jump. He's not as fast. Yeah. It's just, yeah, he can hit, which is why they, I mean, they need his bat. They do. <laughs> I mean, is he like, to start the season, you play Utley over him at second? You'd probably start with Utley. I, I you know... I don't know. Roberts is actually in the 
preseason, he's been playing Hernandez a lot, but he's been playing Hernandez all over the field, so it's hard to say. Yeah, it's. I mean, with all the injuries they got in the outfield, it seems like he's got to crack the outfield, you would think. But... I mean, I, I'd actually rather have him out. I mean, I'd rather have him out there than Crawford, personally. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's true. I mean, look at what uh, Farrell do with the Red Sox benching uh, uh, Sandoval. You know, it's all that money, and he benched him. I kind of hoping we take that approach. Yeah, Crawford's making all this money, but if he can't get it done, just sit him on the bench. Yeah. <coughs> I mean, they were able to do that because uh, a new GM came in. You know, <laughs> so I mean, where the uh, this is still kind of the old guy that brought in Crawford, you know? I mean, they just changed the manager. It's still the same guys pulling the strings back there, right? Isn't it for the Dodgers? Or the Dodgers get a new GM? Uh, I mean, uh, Zaid's only been there for a couple years. Oh, right, uh, no, right, right. Uh, so Coletti made the... Uh, made the big Made deal. the big trade, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Coletti's also the reason... Oh, Alex Guerrero's also hurt. Uh, and he's the reason that Guerrero has a guaranteed roster spot. That was when Coletti made that, signed him. That's why Guerrero, if Guerrero is healthy, he has to be on the team. And he can't play anywhere in the foul field. Anywhere. Right. He can't play third. He can't play short second. He can't play left. <coughs> yeah. I mean, he's got a bat too, but... If he, only the Dodgers were in the AL, you could DH him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think they were trying to give him away too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but... No takers. No takers. Although, we, uh, I have to thank you guys. You guys did take Hanley Ramirez off our hands. <laughs> which We did. Which, we did. <laughs> that was... I'm hoping he's going to be okay this year. You know, we're hiding him over at first base, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully that's hiding him. And, uh, you know, we're hoping he mashes, you know. And we can put up with the uh, thing. You know, it would be good going in left field, but we're trading him. Uh, Dodgers trade him uh, Shebler. Yeah. And I wouldn't yeah. mind seeing him, but he got – So what do you think of the moves in the offseason? Uh, who else do they bring in this offseason? Well, they Casimir, obviously, kind of revamped the pitching staff. Another problem I thought last year was uh, the bullpen. You know, and they, they, you know, it's Kenley and then nobody really with anybody, any consistency, you know, and it's too bad the Chat, Chat, Chapman deal kind of fell through. I know, and that was, that was more of a, you know, moral, right, moral cause, you know, moral, morality, whatever you want Yan to say. Yankees have no problem with it. <laughs> no. Shocker. <laughs> of course not. Why, why would they? <laughs> but, uh, and they didn't really do anything to fix it. I know they signed that, that Cuban kid who they think might come out of the, the bullpen later in the year. Right. Um, actually, Chris Hatcher did pitch really well down the stretch and into the playoffs. Hatcher was not bad. You're uh, absolutely right about he that. He struggled at the beginning of the year, then he got hurt. But when he came back from injury, he actually looked pretty good. If Hatcher And Hatcher the year before was really good for uh, was it Miami. So I'm hoping that um, if, if Hatcher can pitch like that and you have Jansen... At least you have an eight nine, but they are going to struggle in that seventh. Right. You know, you got Baez, you got <clears throat> you got Garcia. You yeah, know. Garcia. I really want him to step up. You know, he's got a live arm. You know, I mean, like well, <laughs> he does. And, and you, Garcia. The, the thing is, is, is he, he's a little dinged up too, isn't he, Garcia? Yeah. Well, this is another thing. One of my knocks on Mattingly is when a guy was hot, he basically ran him into the ground. Right. And then hope somebody else got hot again. Because Avalon was hot for a while last year. When he first came over in that trade from Atlanta, he actually pitched really well. And then he started to struggle because he used him every game. Yeah. And it's uh, and J.P. Howell early in the season <coughs> kind of ran him into the ground. Yeah. It, it's just not having any of that consistency. A guy will pitch good for, you know, three or four weeks. But, you know, you need some guys to go in that seventh and eighth. Because, you know, you look at that um, – kind of like the new blueprint now in in baseball because of the lack of quality starting pitching you know you kind of do take that Royals blueprint and try yeah. and shorten the game you know and have a seventh eighth ninth so your starters only have to go six and which the Dodgers will need a lot of <laughs> past Kazmaier I mean excuse me past Kershaw you know but they don't seem to have that maybe Joe uh, Blanton can be resurrected and be a good eighth <laughs> inning guy I, I I can't see that the I, splits <laughs> project a lot better as a as a, as a reliever <clears throat> well yeah because you don't you don't want that guy going more than two innings <laughs> right right, yeah, right he might be good for an inning yeah and, come and in it, there and throw gas pretend it's like you know oh six <laughs> you know. I can't believe I honestly can't believe Blanton still pitches. <laughs> I know it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy, but I, you know you're kind of throwing dots in that bullpen. I mean to get to Kenley, you know? well, which they did last year. And see, I didn't, I didn't mind some of the chances they took, like when they signed Chris Perez and these former closers who at one time were good and maybe lost it. Like right. I don't mind getting those guys on the cheap. Maybe one of them finds the, yeah exactly. finds the form again. 
But I, I was really hoping they would have gotten... I remember, wasn't uh, Miller from the Yankees on the block for a while? Was he? Oh, I can't uh, imagine that. I mean, if I was hoping they'd go after someone like that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they did go after Chapman. He wasn't yeah. there. And the morality <laughs> issue came up. Who would they have had to give up for uh, Chapman? Do you remember who was rumored? Was it Urias? No, they actually didn't have to give up any of the big prospects. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, Urias, Urias and De Leon uh, both would have been well, both would have stayed. Saved. Yeah. What do you think about those guys? Will we see them up? And what about the, as we're talking about really nobody blowing up our skirt in that bullpen besides Kenley, look at a team like um, when you're talking about blueprints and you look at success in the National League, you got to look at the Cardinals, you know? And it's like what they do, it seems like these guys that are going to be future future studs for them in the um, in the starting rotation kind of come up and get their feet wet as like eighth inning guys like a Carlos Martinez or somebody like that you know and like kind of get their their feet wet in that regard and then kind of they're already have arrived you know once you insert them in the starting lineup do you think you'll see Urias or De Leon come up and I I was hoping we see Urias last year in that role right the kid I mean I know he had the eye issue uh, yeah. And he had surgery on his eye, but he can throw 100 miles an hour, and we had no bullpen. Right. So in September, you call him up, just let him throw gas for you know for an inning, right. or even for a couple hitters. Just let him come in and just just see if they can hit it. Yeah. You know, I was hoping that would happen last year. Uh, I don't, I don't think this management group doesn't seem to sign on to that. I agree with that. Yeah. You bring up, De- I think De Leon will come up before Urias. Okay. So you bring Daly on, even if it's in the pen. Yeah. Okay. He, I think he'll come up first. Okay. Uh, he's supposed to be more. He's supposed to be more pro ready. Okay. And yeah, put him in the pen for a little bit. See, you know, so he, you know, he comes out of the pen doesn't mean he can't start right. the next year. But I don't see any harm in if he can pitch and help the big league club. I don't see any harm in him coming out of the bullpen. Yeah. Do you think there's any like apprehension where it, whereas <laughs> not only is there holes in the bullpen that they didn't address last year, but there's also holes at the back end of the rotation, <laughs> which was also a, a problem last year, and it they kind of have their fingers crossed on some of the guys they brought in. They're really banking on Ryu coming back yeah. and made made working out. So, and Alex Wood yeah. maybe finding his form from three years ago. I'm hoping. I mean, Wood's still 25. Yeah, he's Wood, still, he's still he's, pretty young. He's still so, young, and so, he's a lefty. Yeah, I'm hoping Wood. I mean, I went to the game where he only threw that 89 pitches in eight innings. Right. Where he looked, he looked amazing. And but then the next start will be awful. Yeah, he, he had like the his worst start. Yeah, he gave up like five runs in the next start. But it's better than Carlos Frias. Unfortunately, for some odd reason. I went to three straight games where I managed to see Freas pitch at three straight games, and he gave up no less than seven runs in those three yeah. games. Did you get your money back? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> no, for being season ticket holders for so long, they give us 30% off all merchandise at the anywhere at the stadium. Oh, there you go. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, like, I'm not a Freas fan. Bolsinger actually didn't pitch bad for them. I have a lot of friends who do not like Bolsinger. Yeah. But I don't mind Bolsinger. He looked good at times last I, I year. I thought he looked okay. And did I see that they sent him down? He's going to start in AAA? Or? Actually, I think he's hurt oh, uh, he's right hurt. now. Yeah, okay. I think he's hurt. Because I think he was slated to be the fifth starter with all the injuries. And um, I believe he's I believe he's going to start the season on the deal. I think we'll see him up right away as soon as he's healthy to pitch. Yeah. So I'm thinking for that maybe a, a Ross Stripling for that uh, fifth strata <laughs> spot. I mean, at this point, who knows? Uh, you know, at this point, I think they're throwing darts at a board. I mean, yeah. There's there was talk of Zach Lee even filling that spot, but Lee didn't pitch. He pitched that one start last year. I think he gave up eight or nine runs. Yeah. In his one start, and he hasn't really panned out the way they had hoped thus far. Right. Uh, <sighs> well, the way the schedule's set up, you can probably get away without a fifth start until your second turn through the rotation. <laughs> so they, they bought themselves an extra ten days in yeah. two weeks. You know, yeah, we'll, we'll see. No, they, they still have with a healthy Ryu. That's a solid starting five with a healthy Ryu, especially when Anderson comes back. Yo, definitely. The the trouble is, I I said it last year because um, Anderson really struggled his last couple starts, and then he got hammered in by the Mets. And I said, I said last year, I said, you know. We actually should probably shut him down. <clears throat> Everyone's like, well, you're crazy. I'm like, this guy hasn't pitched this many innings in like five years. Right. He's hit a wall. Yeah. He's not going to come back from it right now. Yeah. Like, five years, this guy has not pitched a full season. And he actually pitched a full season. That was actually solid all, all year. He was a solid starter. Yeah. I was like, he's definitely hit a wall. Yeah, he was on vapors yeah. come September. And he, and he did. You know, he got hammered his last, I think his last three starts and the playoffs. He just got ripped. And I said, I said, no, he just, I mean, I know... Wood hadn't been pitching good, but I think at some point you just got to go. 
we got to stick somebody out there. Right. <laughs> you need you need those guys that can go out there and just eat innings, throw 200 innings in unspectacular fashion, yeah. but not get hurt. Well, that was, a, like I was telling you, I grew up with John Garland, yeah. and, and he, for a long time, was top five in the league in quality starts when he pitched. He, he was an innings eater. Right. Didn't throw overly fast, didn't strike a ton of guys out, but give you six, seven innings, no more than three runs. Right. You know, and you need guys like that. You do. <laughs> you do. <laughs> Like when you see what's out there, I mean, Brett Anderson for what he did last year, he's getting fifteen point eight million this year. I know. I mean, doesn't it you know make you want to get loose? Uh, you know. Uh, Whew. Well, I just I can't see paying Granky thirty five million a year when he's thirty eight years old. I, he, I I was actually I was okay with the Dodgers letting him go for that reason. Yeah. For him to be thirty eight and having making thirty five million a season. For a guy who, let's face it, he doesn't go more than six, seven innings any any outing, right? Because he throws a lot of pitches. Yeah, you know he wastes a lot of pitches. Which I, he's one of those cerebral guys, and he wastes pitches to see just to see if you swing at it. But he's basically setting you up for something else, right? You know that's what makes him so good. But yeah, he really only goes six, seven innings every outing. Yeah, no, I hear you. I, I kind of agree with them, kind of letting him walk, you know. And now he's going to. From one of the better pitcher pox to one of the better hitter pox. Yeah. So that's going to be interesting to see how that shakes out. I, uh, I am a little bummed that he went to Arizona, obviously, <laughs> and stayed in the division, you know. Uh, so you, you, I think uh, the Dodgers organization was fine to let him go, but was hoping maybe an AL team might come in. Uh, I, I think they were. Well, I, that's what I can't, to this to this day, I won, I can't understand why the Angels didn't re-sign him. Right. When they had him, right, and they gave the same money to Josh Hamilton, which made no sense to me at all. That's insane. And Who then when he's a free going. agent, the, how do the Angels again not go after him? When you Jared Weaver can't even throw what he throws eighty five miles an hour right now. Yeah, how do you not try to get another starter? You're wasting the best player in baseball. You're wasting his best years. I don't know, understand how. And their farm <laughs> team is garbage. Their yeah. farm system's terrible. So you have to s- sign somebody in the free agency. You can't well, it, trade for anybody. Well, this is this has been a topic that um, people have brought up. Are the Dodgers wasting Kershaw's best years? You know, because the, the Angels right now the Angels are wasting Trout's best years. Right. And in all honesty, because they have no farm system, they're better off trading him. For the long run. Right. If you want to rebuild your team, I think... I mean, if you really want to rebuild, to rebuild a contender... Will he play left? (laughs) (laughs) I think if you have him, you'd move somebody. (laughs) You'd move... uh, Mookie Betts? uh, No, I like Betts a lot, but if Trout came on your team, Betts is playing right. (laughs) Yeah, he actually actually is playing right this year. We got Jackie Bradley and Son, so we'll see. But, uh, you know, and to me, they've won the NLS three years in a row. You know, are you... To me, uh, I... It's an I, even year, though, so that means the Giants yeah, that means the, the Giants kit are, Yeah, that means the Giants are going to be good this year. Especially, I mean, they reloaded. Although, I, I'm i not sold on Cueto. What, and what about Zamarja? How can you oh, be yeah. sold on him? $110 million for a guy who's had a four and a half ERA his whole Awful. career? Yeah, I, I, he, he gave up the most runs and the most hits in the American League last year. Yeah. And he I, gets like five years, 110. 90, 100, 110? No, 110. <laughs> I don't That's get it either. Insane. That's insane. Uh, but Cueto, I mean, the Dodgers were all about Cueto last year. It, up until he got... It, um, yeah, traded to Kansas City. Well, yeah, because they weren't going to give up a prospect for him because I think they were sold that, oh, we'll sign him in the offseason. Right. And then they had no interest in him this offseason. And I wondered, is it is he not healthy? Is there something that... Well, he didn't really light the world on fire, uh, you know, when he went over with Kansas City, but he did look good in the World yeah. Series. He had that good stuff for them. So, yeah, I, I thought maybe the Dodgers should, especially, I mean, they got money to burn. Yeah, I why, know. Why not? You know, bringing some, I mean, it's going to cost less than, uh, you know, Granky would have cost. Yeah, I, I, I think I, there had to be something up as to why they didn't pursue Cueto. Yeah. I haven't read anything about why, but to me, when they were talking about him, talking about him, talking about him, and then all of a sudden, when you can't sign him, they just walk away. You know, maybe he has an elbow issue. I don't know. I mean, there was rumor that he had an elbow issue. I know he. Uh, if you ever read the, I love reading uh, Mike Sosha's Tragic Illness. If you ever read that, it's a great. He does a lot of baseball, but he talks about when he talks about pitchers, uh, certain pitches that they'd like to throw that tend to get hammered. <laughs> And they show he shows all the stuff like you need to throw this pitch more, not this pitch more, and it was a go. I forgot which pitch it is. It was some. I think it might have been his cut fastball. <laughs> his go to pitch was getting lit up, and it was his go to pitch. So that's why they thought he had some kind of elbow issue because it was slower velocity. It wasn't moving as much. 
Um, and now, so I think come the playoffs and the World Series, I think he, he did stop throwing it. Right. So he did realize that I can't throw this pitch anymore. This is uh, Granky? Uh, no, no. Cueto. Oh, yeah. No, Granky, I mean, Granky didn't look good in the playoffs last year. Yeah. And Kershaw actually pitched okay. Yeah. This wasn't, uh, I mean, in years past he hasn't, but last year he pitched good against the Mets. Yeah. Granky, I mean, well, I don't know. Daniel Murphy just kind of lit them up last year anyway. <laughs> that was crazy. That was crazy. The, um, yeah, I mean, I, I want to see like some of these youngsters up here and just put them in the rotation and see what you got almost. But they are going to be on an innings limit. So, yeah, the, the, and the Dodgers are really, I mean, they built that farm system in the, in the number one. I think they're number one right now. Are they? Yeah, I think so. And I think that they. They're gonna After the Red Sox <laughs> traded for Kimbrel, you know, yeah. we're a little depleted. <laughs> they're, but the Dodgers are gonna they're gonna bring those guys up slow. I they're not gonna sac they're not gonna they're yeah, not Urias gonna is still what 19, 20? 20, I think yeah. he's twenty. Yeah. They're not but they're not gonna sacrifice <clears throat> the short term for their big picture. But like you say, I mean, are we wasting Kershaw's best years? And does that open the door to trading him? Uh I, see, I don't think I don't think they're wasting it. They've had legitimate chances, like last year. They they should have beat the Mets. Right. They had legitimate chances to blow up in that game, and they just they have horrible situational hitting. The Dodgers do not have good situational hitting at all. They don't. They, they really were don't. really bad with uh, in runners in scoring position yeah. last year. I I would say that that was probably their biggest. Achilles heel last year, and a lot of people pointed to the, the bullpen yeah. or the back end of the rotation, which we already addressed the problems. But that one, not hitting in the clutch, yeah. was big. Well, like they had, it was a tie game. Justin Turner doubles to open an inning. Ethier comes up next. Left-handed hitter right. pops it up into left field, <laughs> which you know, I mean, they even had a shift on and he popped it up. And it was one of these things where, like, how do you not? Ethier, how do you not get that ball on the ground and get it on the right? Uh, get it into right. I don't. How do you not do that? And especially National League ball, you expect those yeah. guys know how to play small ball. Which I'm hoping Roberts, because Mattingly did not like hit and runs. He did not like letting guys run. Right. I'm hoping that with Roberts, who was a who stole bases, pl- p- played leadoff for the Dodgers. I'm hoping that Roberts will. Excite that a little more. Not to mention, you got <laughs> Davey Lopes as your first base yeah. coach. I mean, he's one of the best. Base deals of all time. You got Maury Wills who's still around the team. I mean, <laughs> you know, teach boys, <laughs> teach. Yeah, I mean they they were really bad last year with runners and scoring. Yeah, position. they, they were. That was just oh. And, and I agree with you. I actually think that was their biggest Achilles heel. You can get around issues with your pitching, but if if guys are in scoring position and you can't bring them home, it's not going to matter. I mean, Kershaw gets no run support. I don't think he's ever gotten run support ever. You know, actually, Granky last year had ter- terrific run support behind him. Yeah, <coughs> Kershaw was bad, and then Granky, yeah, got ton- tons of yeah. run support. Yeah, man. I mean, who's gonna really? What do you think about Jock? I mean, is he gonna? Is this guy ever gonna hit two fifty in the bigs? Or he looked better in the spring, yeah. uh, and he was actually going with pitches instead oh, of trying really? to turn on everything. Yes. A, a couple of the spring games, I saw he actually went with pitches, which we did not see at all last year. No. And that's the way you blossom, you know. Yeah. And it almost, almost like that hot start kind of w- kind of hurt him a little yeah. bit because he just said, "Okay, I can do this. It's easy." And he didn't really have to go to all fields like you were saying. Yeah. But that is when it opens up for hitters. And he did it from just a couple games I saw in the spring. He he actually did shorten his swing. He still struck out a lot, but yeah. at yeah. least he wasn't hell. You know, he had that helicopter swing that was killing him. I mean, just killing him. You know, and. Puig actually looked pretty good to me in the spring, so I'm hoping that I'm hoping that Puig can find that form again. Puig is definitely the key, you know. Um, so I mean, you, you, Gonzalez, he's obviously, hopefully, he's rock steady yeah. over there first. And the stuff you saw in the spring is. I'm hoping it's just him getting into form. That's right. all. That's. It was. A, it's just. It was a little troublesome because I'm like, oh, he doesn't usually swing late like that. That's not usually his style. Yeah. You know, he usually turns on pitches and. The, it just it's worrisome because he's getting older. Right. You know, that's, right. that's where it gets worrisome. Father time's <laughs> undefeated. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, and so then second base. I mean, you could have told if you told me at the end of last season that Chase Utley and Howie Kendrick would both be back on the Dodgers, <laughs> I would have no, I would have taken that bet. Oh yeah, I know. Me, you know. Actually, me too. I I mean, they were more than happy to let Kendrick walk. Right. You know, they only extended him the offer hoping someone would sign him so they could get the draft, the draft pick. pick. Yeah. <laughs> And it's crazy, like, and then they 
got him back for two years of 20. It just yeah. made financial sense. So I think that guy can hit, and he's one of the better on-base guys. Yeah, he is. You know, which, so. is, which is why I think when he's healthy, he'll, he'll, he'll be lead off. Lead off. Yeah. Cause, it's it's uh, really a dice throw right now in the leadoff spot. It is. I mean, I, honestly, I could, see, I could see Crawford there, and then, like I said, I could see Hernandez there. Right. I can even see Utley there if Utley, Utley is playing second that day. Yeah. I think. I mean, with with Kendrick out, you got to think it's going to be Utley. I mean, he he just seems like the perfect two hole hitter to me. You know, at least he was when he was. Yeah, with the Chase Utley <laughs> five years ago, but now he's kind of like you know probably should be uh, commentating games. But you know, I mean, then there's Corey Seager did look really good, so I'm I'm hoping that. I know he's predicted to be Rookie of the Year in the National League. Yeah. So I'm hoping that he's a little dinged up though, isn't he? Yeah, he's supposed to be fine now. Yeah. He did get a little dinged up, but yeah. so he'll be in there. I mean, that kid's a stud. He, he's a can't miss. How do you feel about the catcher slot? Who do you like there? You like old standby AJ Ellis or uh, you know? I mean, Grandall's bat for half the season was good last year. Yeah. Not, I mean, he struggled mightily too at the end of the. But then it turned yeah. out he was hurt. Yeah. For a lot of that. Uh, you know what? I actually am an AJ Ellis fan. I think he calls a good game. He does. Um, I think. I think defensively, he's a pretty solid catcher. He he's able to get to balls, yeah. um, and he hits for about six weeks yeah. during the season. You just you, you just gotta you know like that one year it was in the playoffs. Like you know it's just it, it, it is for six weeks. Like you said, just uh, depends on when that six weeks is. Yeah. Because I remember uh, what was it two years ago in the playoffs? He got he was hitting like eight hundred. Like he got the super hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so we got to wrap up real quick though. Um, I saw an over under for ninety wins. Do you think over under for that? I think under. Yeah. I, I like I said. I think it's eighty seven is where they tap out. Yeah. That's you, you think you think the Dodgers are uh, in the playoffs this year as a wild card or not so much? They're coming out of the Central again. Uh, you know, I actually think they can sneak. I think the Cardinals and Cubs, whoever wins, and the one will be the wild card. Right. So um, you think there'll be another wild card? I think card they out can be that last wild card. I okay. think they can be. Okay. Hope so. Hope so. And who are we starting off with this week? The Padres, Padres tomorrow. The Padres tomorrow down in San Diego. Yep. Nice. And Vin Scully's calling the game. Oh, nice. It's Vinny's last year, and uh, he is calling. Uh, he is going to uh, call opening home day games, in San right? Diego. Yeah, okay. Only home games, but right. they open uh, in San Diego. It's and close enough. He's going to call the it's game big tomorrow. big redhead. I love it. I love <laughs> it. Hey, guys, we're going to sign off uh, for Joshua Gershon. I'm Mike Conley. This has been another edition of Dodgers Wrap 360. Go Dodgers. Have a season. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.